thoughts cross through your mind, you know, am I going to be able to make it? Am I going to have to abandon this trip tomorrow? Am my feet going to be so sore that I can't walk tomorrow morning? I'm going to have to run for the ferry, I think. Sandbank ferry. Going across Poole Harbour. Just going to make it. the beginning of the southwest path another adventure can't wait and we're going to start walking towards Weymouth from here across the beach who needs uh, the Cote d'Azur or the uh, Monte Carlo or Exactly. I think they've all come here. Look, all the, the boats. Beaches, the beaches of Spain. All the boats are here, aren't they? That's right. Cut yeah. them around. April 1944, Winston cool. Churchill, King George the Sixth, and General Eisenhower. They came here to watch the combined power of the Allied forces preparing for D-Day. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at this! And then we've got this uh, <laughs> army plane, I think. Um, so when they got ready for the Normandy landings, ten tank battalions were distributed along the Allied force among the Allied forces to, for DD assault on Normandy. This is the uh, observation window. Hello, hello. It's a bit wet in here, York. There's water in here. Yes. But it's not. You know, it's okay. Yeah. It's a bit like a public toilet. <laughs> I hope it's not a public toilet. Fit through there with my bag. Bring it in, Richard. <laughs> and this is the observation window. Look at that. Look at the view. You see, so they can see the whole of uh, the harbour. Well, not harbour, but all, you can see all the way around to the entrance to Paul Harbour. That's where we walk from. And then all the way back around to that's Bournemouth on the other side. And if you go all the way around, you can then see uh, the white cliffs on that side. That's um, Isle of Wight. So Isle of Wight, probably going up to Portsmouth, all the way around to Bournemouth, all the way around to Poole, and then this lovely beach here. Yeah, it's, some, it's a military exercise. They're just uh, dropping some supplies and there's some some people down there in the sea, I think. There it goes. Another amazing view there. So I think you can see there the needles again. Just get a better view because the sun is shining on the cliff and then to the right hand side uh, the lighthouse will be there. So we've left Old Harrier now, walking towards Swanage. It's probably not that, that far. Just around the coast here, so that's where we're going to go for lunch. Nice relaxed walk in the... Yeah, it's a good job I've got a really good experienced hiker with me today who's who's been an expert guide, he knows all the history. Experience, I mean old. <laughs> Veteran. The view of Swanage. And then going all the way around the blue or emerald sea, sweeping all the way around the cruise ships, the Isle of Wight, and then back to Bournemouth over there. Amazing. So, what do you think about Swanage, Short? Lovely, old fashioned seaside town, and that still has its character. Is it this way to the beach? So Swanich is back to life, just as normal. So I'll just say goodbye to York and then it'll be back to my solo backpacking adventure. 
been really good to see York after, after quite a few months actually and it's really different to sort of walk with someone and then I've got two more days of, uh, of solo so uh, looking forward to this So I'm going to Durlston Country Park via the coast path, so I'm back down this way. I've just got to load up some water to make sure I've got enough water because I don't know where I'm going to get my next water, so check that and then off I'll go again. Out of Swanwich now, there's a beach back there. I'm walking around to Purville Point, I think it's called, and then to Durlston Country Park. So I'm going out into the wilderness as a solo solo hiker so now over the headland and the adventure continues so Durlston Head I've been down the road and now I'm joining this path getting more out now into the wilderness looking forward to this now it's now it's only four no it's five o'clock now so I haven't walked that far in the last hour I had a nice sit down and chat to some older couple so I'm just taking it easy I don't want to overdo it on the first day of this three-day hike I'm just wearing in my shoes and getting really familiar with it all my new backpack things of you know I'm carrying quite a lot of weight so I'm using this as a bit of a warm-up day It's now that time of day where everyone's gone home. It's not open, but there's some people just locking it away. So the coast path is this way, 600 million years to go. Yeah, it feels like that actually at the moment. Um, I never expect the first day to be that easy. I've heard it's pretty brutal, this uh, coastal path. So I don't expect to do huge mileages. I don't expect to do 20 miles a day on this, at least uh, on this trip. I mean, look at this. Isle of Wight straight ahead. I mean, it really does take your breath away. The beautiful sea. I'm not going to pretend it's easy right now because it's not. Um, these are new boots which I haven't really worn in properly. So one of the feet is sore at the bottom of the heel. So I stopped. So I put a plaster on that so hopefully that will help that. The bag is a brand new bag which is fantastic. Uh, but again I'm still getting used to it. And so these um, hip, the hip band is quite tight around my waist and I'm not really used to having that around my waist. So with the belt, because I wear a leather belt, the belt was sort of rubbing into my midriff. So I had to take my belt off. So it's not the end of the world, but it's just, um, I suppose it's teething problems because of the first day. So, you know, ideally, you shouldn't test out new kit on, on trips like this when you're doing three days. Um, I think it's going to be okay because I'm doing a shorter route today, but I'm taking it easy. But it just shows you, doesn't it? So I'm going to persevere, but I just wanted to say I am struggling right now because um, even though I've got a plaster on here, it's sort of sore. This is sort of bothering me around my waist. This is actually quite heavy. So even though it's a lovely view, um, I've been more comfortable on a walk, I'll put it that way. And um, I'm getting tired. Um, I thought I should show my grumpy side, not just show the highlights. Uh, there are ups and downs on trips like this. It's not easy at the moment, but I will make it, don't worry. At real point. Ah, it's incredible. This is a footpath, so it's pretty fierce, this footpath. 
boots you don't have boots on very jagged rocks look at these pointed it's pretty wild out here it's just like grassland on the cliff edge and there's a deer I'm not sure if he's a stag but he's got I think he has got antlers he doesn't know he's looking at me but because I'm not moving he can't really see me there he goes look at that an amazing view against the sun amazing view so the deer up here as well there he goes gone there he goes I think he can he can smell me because the wind is blowing that's what is blowing away from me to his direction so he could smell me there he's gone that was amazing well I'm just giving my feet an opportunity to breathe for a little bit um, which is good a little bit warm cool them off a bit I changed my socks to new socks I put dry plaster over my blister and it does feel much better now um, basically I feel like I'm in that film The Wild have you seen that a woman backpacks across America that's how it feels right now here thoughts cross through your mind you know am I going to be able to make it am I going to have to abandon this trip tomorrow and my feet going to be so sore that I can't walk tomorrow morning all these thoughts go through your head I'm only on day one so you know it's a real challenge to do three day walk well I have to just see what happens tomorrow I also haven't got many plasters left uh, the other thing is on this stretch I've got no idea about water so I don't know where I'm gonna get my water from you know there's no information on on the on the south coastal path southwestern coast path website about practical things like where you get your water if you're a real through hiker so I've I've got um, two and a half liters of water on me that's not that much it's enough for tonight and probably you know part of tomorrow but from what I can see and from the map this is really is the wilderness uh, you know there's nothing you don't go for any towns here so we'll see I, I know this has been a challenge for many people that didn't make it so right now will I make it will I be able to do three days you know everything else has been quite easy up until this point but I'm really questioning will I be able to make it I really don't know I don't know and look at this the, the footpath the footpath is very very slippy jagged rocks very very slippy and because I watched some another youtuber do this trip and uh, I remember him and his wife and they walked along here they ran out of water when they were coming the street they were walking the opposite direction they ran out of water and so they were eating black currants at the time and no water so that suggests there's not much water that way so what he did was he came to this water trough here and he got water out of the water trough so obviously the water trough itself is pretty disgusting but I'm going to try it what I can do is, is you can do this under the, put this under the stop cap like this. And you get water out. There you go. And that will be, presumably, that will be water that I can drink. Now, there you go. I'm still going to boil it but at least I've got some extra water just in case so time is moving on it's 7.30 it's 
This is pretty incredible, this is called the Dancing Ledge. I want to show you this. There's people down there. It's a pretty amazing place actually. As the sun disappears behind the ridge. And this is the spot I'm really going to camp in. So I don't really feel like going any further. It's lovely and peaceful down here. No wind. Sound of the birds again. And we've got the cows. So this is my setup. I've just found a little bit of a little bit of a clearing. It's a beautiful spot. And here's where I am here. It's not on the cliff edge in case you're wondering or worried. There is a cliff edge here. I'm going down there, that's the cliff edge. So this is where I am. Right there. It's the best spot I've wild camped so far, there's no doubt about that. You can see the wild deer there. Don't know how close he's gonna let me get to him, but I don't know if he can jump the fence. Does he jump the fence? I don't know where he goes. So I didn't really want want to spend the night with a wild deer. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. And I'm going to try tonight this adventure food which I got from Go Outdoors. So I've got um, this. It's chicken curry, 600 calories, high energy chicken curry. All you do is boil the water, about 400 milliliters, and just put it in the bag, stir it, leave it for eight minutes, then eat. So it's ready. I've got my curry. There you go. It's quite nice, quite tasty. It's quite substantial as well. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to eat this, relax as the boats go by and the plane goes by. And then I'm going to get ready for, for bed tidy everything up so it's gone dark now so you can probably still see the moon hopefully and you can see the plane going by the roof of the tent <laughs> 